all right welcome back to the channel <clears throat> uh, today I want to talk to you about something uh, photography related that uh, is kind of a neat thing that I stumbled upon um, a while ago I was looking at my lenses that I have for my uh, Fuji cameras and I was thinking you know it'd be nice to have a, a 50 millimeter prime lens uh, it'd be nice to have one that's maybe a longer lens uh, for doing some bird stuff and, and nature photography and uh, I was also looking for a more of a wide angle prime as well and looking at the prices of lenses and the amount of times that I would use them I thought you know it's kind of crazy to go out and spend five hundred to a thousand dollars or more on a lens that I'm not going to use very often um, so I went to what everybody does and went to YouTube and Google and uh, lo and behold I discovered uh, how many people were putting vintage lenses on new DSLR and mirrorless cameras and so I started to venture into that and take a look and I got remembering that uh, quite a few years ago now my dad had given me a couple of film cameras that he had uh, from back in the 70s and early 80s and so I still have them. They were in a, in a box here, and uh, I dug them out. And sure enough, um, with a little searching on the internet, I was able to find one of these. And I don't know if you can see that there, but basically, it's an adapter that adapts my Fuji camera um, to, in this case, a Miranda camera's lens. Uh, my dad used to shoot Miranda. So I was able to find this. It was about $50 on Amazon. Uh, it's all made of metal. And basically the way it works, it's pretty simple actually. You take and put the Fuji side, line the dots up, and it mounts onto the front of the camera. And then you take one of your old lenses, whether it be a Nikon, a Canon, um, they have the M42 mounts, the screw mounts, um, the Leica mounts, um, the sky's the limit as far as these adapters to adapt to your Canon and your Nikon and Fuji and Sony cameras that you have now. So all I have to do now is line these dots and lo and behold I now have a 50 millimeter Miranda f1.8 lens on my Fuji X-H1. Now, um, before you're thinking that, go thinking that this is the be all to end all, this is a fully manual lens. These older lenses do not have autofocus, they don't have the contacts um, in the adapter. Uh, to do auto focusing so this is definitely um, if you're okay with manual focusing uh, this is great if you're not okay with doing manual focusing don't go down this road uh, myself most of the photography I do is uh, manual focus um, I prefer that I like to control um, where the camera is shooting and what it's shooting and I find using the autofocus sometimes it looks good on this little tiny screen on the back but then I get home and realize that I've missed focus so uh, these new lenses though or sorry these new cameras are uh, absolutely amazing um, even with an old lens and what's cool is you get that old lens vibe when you shoot with one of these Part of the reason being is this one here and uh, one of the other ones, you can't really see it unless you're in the daylight, but this is a 21 millimeter uh, f3.5, uh, which is nice to have a, a prime wide angle. I'm very happy to have that. Um, and an f3.5, which is not too bad either. But if you look at them in the sunlight, the glass is actually starting to turn a bit yellow reason being is that that's actually radioactive glass um, and over time as they get older the glass starts to turn a bit yellow 
Now, I'm not licking this or holding it up to my body that often, so I don't need to worry about much about the radioactivity. However, it gives your photos a really interesting hue, um, especially if you're shooting in sunlight. It gives it a bit of a yellowish tinge, which is kind of neat. Um, we're going to go out and we're going to shoot with all three of these lenses. Um, so like I said, I've got the 51.8 on here now. I've got a Soligor um, 21mm Prime f3.5. And I also have a Soligor uh, f3.5 135mm. And uh, Dad also had a couple of extension tubes for on these. He had a two-time and a three-time extension tube for doing uh, macro. Um, and on a tripod, that three-time tube with this 135 is actually over 500 millimeters. Now, it's not crisp and clean like the new lenses are, uh, which you'll see from some of the photos that we shoot in this video. Um, but at 135 millimeters, it's an amazing lens, actually. These are all metal. They're all very, very solid. This one's got a built-in lens hood that when you pull up on it, it just retracts, which is kind of neat. Um, so yeah, and they're primes. I mean, there's nothing better than a prime lens, right? Uh, how is the glass compared to, to today's lenses? It's not as good. Um, but when you see the results, the thing I like about these old lenses is what we call the bouquet, um, the background, this blurriness, like what you see behind me over here. With these lenses, the new lenses nowadays um, do not do as nice a job with bouquet as what these do, in my opinion anyway. Um, I've always liked the vintage look of the old film lenses and using Fuji and having film simulations built in I can actually set my camera to Astia soft uh, film I could set it to Belvia if I'm doing landscapes um, but what's nice is when you're doing portraits you know you can set up the Astia or the classic chrome and the bouquet that these lenses give maybe not so much the 21 millimeter but definitely the 135 and the 50. If I want to use these for portraits, and uh, you know, in a, in a well lit situation, obviously, because I am going fully manual, um, it's incredible the uh, the way it renders the background. And uh, I think the new lenses today are so sharp um, that you don't get that quality anymore. You don't get that nice bubbly sort of milky smooth bouquet. You can do it in post-processing, and most of us do, um, where we can go in and touch it and, and blur it even more. Uh, but these really do an amazing job of that, and you'll see that later in the video here when I when I post some photos. Um, on my camera, I have what they call focus peaking. So what's nice with the digital cameras now is I can go into the menu system, and I can set it to manual focus. Um, now the first thing I have to do actually on the Fuji anyways, I have to go into the menu system and I have to set my camera to take a photo with no lens attached. Uh, otherwise, it will not snap the shutter on this. Um, it doesn't recognize that there's even a lens attached to it right now. The other thing I can do is I can go in and I can set it up because we're not getting any EXIF data from the lens, because the lens isn't talking to the camera, I can go in and at least set up what lens this is. So I can go into my settings on this Fuji and I can go, okay, this is a 50 millimeter. I set the 50 millimeter, take my photos with it. Then what happens is once I bring that into Lightroom or Photoshop um, or Adobe Bridge, I get the information that this was shot with a 50 millimeter. It doesn't tell me what brand it was, but it will tell me it was shot with a 50 millimeter and it won't tell me the aperture any of that stuff, but it will tell me what the lens was. Um, same thing, I've gone in and I've made a custom one for the 135 millimeter, and I've made a custom setting for the 21 millimeter. So when I attach those lenses, I just go into the menu system and I say, okay, hey, camera, now I'm shooting with 
this 21 millimeter. That way I at least some, somewhat retain the information of what lens I used at least. Um, and like I say, you have to turn on the uh, shooting without a lens on. And then when you go into focusing, so obviously it's going to be uh, manual focusing. But what we're going to do, oh, let me just get out of movie mode here. Uh, what you're going to want to do is go into your autofocus menu, if you're on the Fuji anyways, and you're going to switch on the front to manual focus. But what you want to do is turn on focus peaking. And what that does is that allows me to set a color so that when I'm viewing through the eyepiece um, what's in focus and what's not, I've got it set to the color red. So everything that shows up with a red line around it, I know is in focus. Um, so I can, you know, if I'm looking at a face through here, as long as I've got the eye and the nose with red on it, I know that that is in focus and I can snap my, my shutter and get that photo. Um, older cameras don't do that. The newer ones do. Uh, and you'll, you know, every camera will be different. You'll have to go into your menu system to turn that on. Uh, but it is really, really handy. And I can kind of show you that on the back here. The other thing is, is that on my camera and on most most digital SLRs nowadays, you can zoom in when you're doing manual focusing. So on mine, there's a scroll wheel on the back, and you just push in on it. And if you push it a second time, it zooms in even further. And that allows you to really adjust your focus peaking. So it is it is manual focus, but you do have a little bit of assistance. Um, it really makes it nice to work with, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's far superior to uh, the old film cameras, like what this used to be on. Uh, one of them's automatic, the other one is not automatic. It, it was fully manual. So when you were focusing, it had that round circle with the line through it, and you had to ma match up all the checkered squares on it. Um, not a lot of fun when you're trying to shoot something really quick. Whereas this, you know, now I can just, boom, that's focus peaked, boom take a photo. So it's much faster. Uh, not as fast as autofocus obviously, uh, but it is very cool and you can hear obviously that it does indeed snap the shutter for you. Um, but like I said, we'll take this out. We'll take all three of these lenses and we will try them outside and uh, we'll see what we end up with. And I'll, I'll shoot some video of taking the photos as well and uh, put the settings in on the photos so you can see what the settings were and I think you'll see a difference between these old style of glass compared to the new glass of today.
back. We uh, shot a few photos there, and uh, it was a lot of fun to be honest. I uh, used my youngest boy in a, in a few of them, and uh, was able to get some pretty interesting photos. Um, and I shot each one, like I would start with the uh, 21, and then I would do the 50, and then I'd take the same photo, just with each different lens, so that you can see, too, how wide they are to how narrow it is. Um, yeah, so hopefully you liked the photos. Hopefully you liked the way they turned out. Um, it was kind of neat. And like I say, when you look at the bouquet in the background, how different it is compared to the new uh, the new lenses. The new lenses are almost too good, in my opinion. Um, it makes it very hard to blur the background, even when you have a lens that's you know an f1.8 or, or an f2 and, and it has a very shallow depth of field. It still retains a lot of detail in that background and uh, too much detail for my liking. I like a really nice soft background, especially for portrait work. And uh, this little lens right here, this 50 millimeter 1.8, definitely gives you that. So, yeah, check it out. If you have a, a Canon, a Nikon, uh, if you have a Sony, a Fuji, um, like I say, these adapters, you know, maybe you've still got some old film lenses kicking around. And, uh, you know, don't throw them away. Clean the glass on both ends and uh, find yourself an adapter like this. Like I say, Amazon, eBay have them. Um, this one is a Photo Diox, it's called. And it's a uh, Miranda to FX, which is Miranda camera on the front to Fuji on the back. And uh, works awesome. It's very sturdy. I love it. So, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you can uh, take some of your old lenses and uh, mount them onto your new camera and learn how to shoot all over again. Because when you start using manual completely, it, uh, it definitely gives you a bit of a challenge as well. Uh, but it's a good challenge and uh, it produces some really nice results. So uh, Stay tuned for some more videos some more photography stuff here. We got uh, a whole day of photography coming up. Um, it's an, actually a, a photography competition that I'm involved in uh, between the photography club I'm in and two other photography clubs locally. So we've got a full day, 12 hours of shooting. Um, so I'm going to try to video that and uh, we submit those images and then it's each club is against each other with a total score. So Maybe some of my images will make it in, maybe they won't, but that's fine. The main thing is that we're out uh, shooting some photos. So um, if you like videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, we'll keep trying to do some tutorial stuff as well along the way. And some more gaming stuff, of course, and some more barbecue stuff. Um, we'll try to keep everybody fed through the winter here too. So anyway, give us a like subscribe and click on the notification bell that's in the corner somewhere and uh, that way you'll get notified every time we upload something thanks for tuning in